In this video, I'm going to talk about how to save your marriage. Now, if your wife has already told you that she's not in love with you anymore and she's talking about divorce, maybe this video isn't for you because that kind of a situation is different. And if you want to figure out what to do there, watch this video here. But if you're in this marriage where you just want to make things better, maybe it's a sexless marriage, maybe she's just a little bit checked out, it's like a roommate situation, you want to turn that around, go back to the spiciness, then this video is absolutely for you and I want you to watch every point on this one just like all of my videos because if you miss one of these points, you're just cherry picking the information and it just won't be nearly as effective. Again, the devil is in the details and I'm gonna to try to be as specific and detailed as possible in these videos, so don't miss any of them. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. Communication. Therapists love to say everything's about communication, but the problem is it's not effective to just tell guys to communicate because then guys will just do logical shit. If you want to communicate effectively with your wife, tell her what you want. Stop talking about how you feel. Now this simple shift makes you more assertive in how you operate with your wife. Most guys are like, well, I feel like we could just go get Mexican. Well, do you feel like it or do you really fucking want it, motherfucker? Hey, I want to go get Mexican tonight. She's like, great. Right now he's leading by example. He's leading her to where he wants to go. And she's like, well, I don't really feel like Mexican. Okay, well, I'd like to go here then. Right? Tell her what you want. Stop talking about how you feel about things. She doesn't need to worry about how you feel. You're the decision maker. You are the leader. So just tell her what you want. Now you're not going to command her what you want. You just say, hey, I want this. Hey, I'd like to go out this weekend. Hey, I'd like to go out for a hike with you. Hey, I'd like to have more sex. Hey, I'd like to be more intimate with you. Hey, I'd like to have better conversation with you. Right? When you tell her what you want, you are clearly communicating what you want. And for most women, they don't know what their men fucking want. And they're just floundering all over the place because the guys don't know what they want because they've been so kowtowed into being the subservient follower. If you want to lead an effective marriage, you have to lead by communicating exactly what the fuck you want. Now, if you're going to tell her what you want, you're going to have to take responsibility for making that happen. Right? If you're going to say, hey, I want to get a promotion at my job, you're going to have to go do the things that make that happen. If you're going to say, hey, I want to have more intimacy in the bedroom, you're going to have to start figuring out how to be more seductive in your life. And you're going to have to tell her how you want to be seduced. And if you want to say, hey, I want to have better communication with you, don't just sit there and wait for her to go buy books on communication or have more intimacy. Don't wait for her to do something. You have to take action and take responsibility. Again, you're the leader. You have to go first. That's what it means to lead is to just do it first. And I made this mistake myself. Like I bought this book because she was really into, she bought the book and she was really into um, wanting to be more intimate in like the way that we converse with each other and, and learning how to work on sexual polarity and get each other really riled up for each other and really just have a good time and play, you know? And so she got this book and then I was like, hey, you gonna read it? Hey, you gonna read it? I've been reading it. Are you gonna read it? Are you gonna read it? And I kept wondering about like, when's she gonna fucking read the book? And it took me about six months to realize that no, I'm supposed to lead this motherfucker. I said, don't worry, you don't have to read it. I'm gonna teach you all the things in the book. I'm gonna lead you to that place and show you by example. And she's like, thank God. And she got super excited and turned on by it. You're like, well, does that take her, absolve her of all the responsibility? No, dude, you're creating a seductive life, so seduce your wife. How are you gonna seduce your wife if you don't have a seductive life? You can't lead seductively. And so by doing this simple trick, she is all in and now we're doing the things and it is fucking fun and it is awesome. But I had to take responsibility just like you have to take responsibility for all the things that you want in your life. You have to take extreme ownership. But you have to prioritize your time, not even just prioritizing time together, but prioritizing presence within that time together. So there was one client that we had recently and he was like, I don't have time for all this time with her. Like I really just have so much going on in my life. I said, dude, all you need is 30 minutes in the morning. 30 minutes in the morning when you're getting your coffee, just sit down at the table and just have a conversation where you're looking her right in the eye and just be really, really present with her. And I guarantee you that's going to be more than enough that she needs. He's like, no, she's going to need way more than that. She's going to need way fuck more than that. Three months later, he comes back and he's like, that actually worked. That one tip saved our marriage. And the thing is, is a lot of business owners do this. These guys are executives. They have a lot of time on their hands. And a lot of what they're doing is to do with just managing time and mental bandwidth. But if you can do something just as simple as that, having prioritized presence with your partner, it can make a massive shift in your relationship. Now, when you're having this presence with her, if you're sitting here asking for permission, 
by the way you're looking at her with puppy dog eyes and not really telling her what you want and not being assertive, it's just going to annoy her. And then you're going to fail and you're going to wonder why it's not working. Like, I can be present. Yeah, you, she doesn't need you to be present in that moment. She needs you to be more dominant and assertive. And so there's a game here where if you have a guy who is overly dominant and assertive and he kind of steamrolls his wife and he walks around and does whatever he wants, he's not present, then he needs more of this. But if you're that guy who is, if you're, but you go too far in that direction where you're just present with her all the time, trying to elicit connection all the time and prioritize the relationship, and you're lacking in a dominance in your life, then you gotta go and start being more dominant and not more present. This is gonna seem kind of counterintuitive on how to save your marriage, but really you should be focusing on yourself. Most guys who are in this situation where their relationship becomes sexless, they end up focusing on their wife so much, she's just like, give me some space. Stop trying to seek my approval. And, he lo and she loses respect for him because she's so, he's so up her ass all the time trying to get approval and validation through sex and intimacy and compliments or whatever it is he's doing. And it's a big turnoff for her. She wants a guy who is self-validated. She, she wants to be the one who is validated by her husband. You don't want to be the guy who's validated by his wife. It's a one-way street here. Let her be validated by you and you validate yourself or by the big endeavors you're doing in life. Being with a woman means validating yourself and you validate yourself by the game of spiritual eternal expansion. In other words, can I be better each day than I was the day before? Can I do bigger and cooler and more impactful shit in the world? Can I make more money? And can I create a legacy for my kids? Can I do more? Can I be more as a man? Can I be closer to God spiritually? Your eternal expansion is what she's there to witness. You are the creator, and she is the one who gets to experience this. Now, she's doing the same thing, but in the dynamic of the relationship, you take the more predominant position in this. And so you should be out there going and creating awesome stuff for yourself and for your family. And so when you're sitting here worried about the relationship, worried about getting her back, and worried about doing all this stuff, you're, you're reversing the game. You should be out there creating, and she should be out there wanting to be part of that creation. And if you want to reignite this spark in your relationship, just do one simple thing. The invitation to play. You forget to play with your wife because you're so focused on everything else that she just withers and she's like, I don't know why I'm with him anymore. She doesn't want to have sex anymore. She doesn't want to, she wants to play. Girls just want to have fun. So next time you see your wife, twirl her around in the kitchen, make a joke, mess with her, tease her, be audacious, have fun. Play with her. Create situations that are fun. You can turn just about any relationship around if you just keep maintaining the frame of it is always an invitation to play. Now, if she gives you, if she rebuffs that, don't get butthurt about it. Just leave and come back later and do it again. Let your life be defined by your willingness to play in the world. And then she will want to be drawn back in. It's that simple. You know, saving a relationship takes effort from both of you. But really, if I can get you to pivot, if I can get you to change massively, there's a great chance she's going to follow you. How do I know? Because that's generally how women are built. Men are the leaders and women generally are the followers. And if you do this right, you do this in the proper fashion, then she's just going to naturally fall in line. She's not even going to notice what's happening. She's just going to say, oh, this is great. I feel like magic's happening all, like, all of a sudden. Oh, I'm not so irritated by him anymore. And you're just going to do these things and you're like, how is this so easy yet? I'm like, well, I've taught you how to be yourself again, how to be unafraid and unapologetic in the way that you express yourself. And that's the name of the game. You owning who you are and being out there unleashed as a savage dude, a savage soul seducer, that's who you're supposed to be. So if you want to learn how to resolve conflict in your relationship, check out this video over here. And if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, comment if you disagree or you like this video or you want to see something else in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.